Sky Squad, we are back in the building, baby. Back up in this jamboree. And we got to talk about the Real Housewives of Potomac Season 7 trailer that just dropped. Now, to start things off, the new season will premiere October 9th at 8 p.m. on Bravo. That's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, I'm just going to pull up some other files here. So just stand by, please, as I begin to share the screen. All right. All right. So the headline reads from PeopleMagazine.com, Real Housewives of Potomac Season 7 tease, uh, trailer teases cheating allegations, divorce drama, and a martini toss. Okay. Mia's not tossing salads this year. She's tossing a martini at that good Wendy Osefa. Okay, so we're going to get all into the nitty to the gritty. Um, I want to give you guys a closer look at the cast photos first because I feel like I've been searching for higher resolution images but these are all I'm able to come up with. Um, each of the ladies looks, as I stated before, each of the ladies looks spectacular. Here's Karen and her solo shot. Uh, I'm going to get to, I'm just kind of waiting for everybody to jump into the chat um, as we go through these looks real quick. And then we'll get into the storylines and a little bit of the visuals, okay? Um, so we have Karen looking great here. Dress is simple. It's red. It pops. It works. You know, these could very well also be reunion looks, to be quite honest with you. Robin here in a very simple style dress. I feel like this dress, I mean, it accentuates her curves. Um, you know, Robin is more of a, I would say, athletic style woman. So I feel like she's going to have the body and I feel like a simple dress looks amazing on her. The hair works for her. I love it. It gives very housewife. You know what I'm saying? Like 1960s housewife vibes. I like it. Um, I got to give it up. Uh, Candice serve here in this red. I mean, she looks like, um, is it is it is her name Jessica Rabbit? And 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 she's not. I mean, she's not an actual rabbit, but she's like a like a vixen, like a like a a, a cartoon vixen. And I mean that in the best possible way. You y'all know who I'm talking about, right? Y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, she's giving that type of like sexy vibe right here. I absolutely love this for. And yes, I did wear my red to coordinate with the cast photo. You know, I like to I like to be a little extra. You know what I'm saying? I I like to be a little extra. This right here could be a reunion look as well for Candace. And I almost feel like her hair is a bit red as well. So for everything from the gloves to the simplicity of each of, of this gown is amazing to me. Here we have Giselle. Giselle looks great in this dress. This dress is gorgeous. I can't tell if, if the pattern, what kind of pattern it is, if, if it's snake skin or what. But I do really love the gown on her. I love her stance in this. I love her a uh, beautiful smile. I hate the wig that's just always sitting, seem like it's plopped up on her head. I wish I could make the images a bit bigger for you. That's as, probably as big as I can make it. Um, I never really understand why when she has a stylist for a BFF, why there's always just like, it just looks like the wig is just plopped up on there. And she has great hair. That's the other thing too. It's like, what? What are we doing? What are we doing? OK. Um, and then we'll scroll down and we have. So I got to tell you guys the truth about this gown right here. This gown was made by my BFF, Riley Knox and Riley Knox. OK, slayed this dress for Ashley Darby. I keep trying to tell y'all, if y'all need a gown for an occasion, go on over to Riley Knox on her Instagram. Hit her up. Um, we actually share the same manager. So, you know, I just I just love it. I feel like it fits Ashley like a glove. She made Ashley's last season's reunion outfit. I love the pattern. You know, it's got different detailing on it, different types of material. 
Ashley's hair goes with the dress. I just feel like it's a nice, it's an overall like exquisite look for Ashley Darby. And of course, I may be just a bit biased because my best friend made this gown. So um, there's Ashley Darby. And then we have Wendy Acefo. I mean, guys, I got to tell y'all, everybody is killing their looks. Everybody is killing their looks to me. Um, Wendy is giving statuesque goddess right here. I love it. I love, I, I mean, this her skin just pops with this red. I mean, the hair, everything is laid. If that's one thing we can always say about Wendy, I don't know if y'all ever noticed this, but when she be in the scene and when she be in like, and the only reason I noticed this is because when I'm trying to take photos for um, thumbnails, Wendy never has a hair out of place. Never, ever. Whoever does her hair, I mean, I gotta, we gotta, I gotta give them props because the, the hair never be out of place, okay? And so then we have a look at Mia, and of course, Mia is serving yet again, body yadi yadi yadi. All the gowns are very simple but effective. I think with the color red, you don't need to do too much. All you need is some. Uh, obviously a great body all you need is uh a nice silhouette and everything the you know the 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 body the face the hair everything else will work for the dress i feel like this is simple this was a no brainer the red is lit especially after coming after a reunion where they did pink um and pink worked for half the cast and then they came off a season of yellow where yellow worked for half the cast. But yellow is a hard thing to pull across. But this red right here is, ah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I got to give it to y'all. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get into the actual factual of it all, okay? Uh, you guys see the headline right here. I'm going to give you guys a synopsis of pretty much you know what's happening in the season all right so we're gonna go through a little bit of the trailer don't worry for those of you guys who are just stepping into the room we're gonna get to it i wanted to allow people to come into the room because this was completely spontaneous i did know that the trailer was going to drop today but i did not know at what time so i rushed home from the gym in order to like you know get myself ready and get this get this video rolling and so I also like to take my time as I go through this because this is fun for us, right? It's fun for us to go through this. So it says Maryland's classiest housewives are back for what looks to be their most dramatic season yet. Uh, People has the exclusive premiere of the trailer. The link is in the description of this video right now for those of you guys who haven't seen it. Or you guys can head on over to my Instagram and you guys can check it out there, okay? Um, And at the beginning of the trailer... Um, oh, 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 fun fact. The premiere episode is going to be a supersized 75 minute episode. Okay. So it's going to be longer than the hour. Okay. It's going to be, you know, uh, I think like an hour and 15, I think. So, uh, be on the lookout for that supersized episode, supersized first episode, kind of like, I think they did the same thing last year. All right. Um, so be prepared for that. And then it says Giselle, Karen, Ashley, Robin, Candace, or Dr. Wendy Acefo, and Mia Thornton will all once again star, though they will be joined by a blast from the past. So I want to pull up um, the blast from the past for those of you guys who do not recall some i know some people started potomac late in the game okay um and that's just that i mean it it, it is what it is you know what i'm saying um but for those of you guys who are in the know you will recognize the face of the one and the only sharice is back okay and it is being alleged i already heard that sharice was back i'd actually already heard this t um but apparently (laughs) 
she is going to be taking on Karen Huger. And you will see that in the trailer, okay? So she's going to be coming, popping in along with Katie Ross is back. We already kind of knew that because we had seen, you know, photos of that in the previews as well. So we will have Sharice. You'll see Sharice featured throughout the trailer as well. So Sharice is back as an official friend, okay? She's back as an official friend. Hold on for one second, y'all. All right, I'll take this back. Sharice is back as an official friend, and then she will be joined by Jacqueline Blake, who is one of Mia's close companions as well, all right? So it starts with Karen, who apparently last year renewed her vows with Ray in honor of their 25th anniversary. And this season, she was allegedly seen sneaking out of town with someone who wasn't Ray, according to Candace. So we see that... Um, we see that being talked about kind of here, but you will really get into it amazingly. We will get into that pretty early when we see, uh, Candace and, oh, here it is, I think. Candace and Ashley are actually having like wine together, spilling the tea about Karen. Now, first things first, I had a feeling we would see Ashley and Candace come together, especially after last season's reunion. I had a feeling that was going to happen because of the way that Candace stepped in to defend uh, Ashley during the reunion when Nicki Minaj was grilling Ashley. So also too, I'm glad that they are finally moving on because I hate when a beef lasts for so many seasons that it just becomes stale, okay? Um, but the press release reads that it could be that Ray is okay with that because Karen, we can hear Karen saying, in our marriage, you said I could have eye candy. Now, I know that everybody's marriage is a little bit different. I want to ask y'all in the chat, are, you know, and this is just for, I mean, my own, like own, our own general discussions and purposes. Does your spouse or does your partner mind you looking at other people? Okay. Does your spouse or your significant other, your partner, whoever you're dating, do they allow you to take a, you know, to look at ogle over or say, you know, oh my God, you know, dang, she's sexy or dang, he look good. That's a good looking, you know, do, does your partner allow that? Or, and are you okay with it? Okay. <laughs> Dina says, no, I don't have one. <laughs> I can be. Oh yes. Oh yes. Miss D. Green says, look, after 25 years, I imagine that the rules get a little creative. <laughs> um, Chris Lynn says, my husband don't mind and I don't mind either. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like, you know, I mean, right. Don't look too long, right? Look, but don't touch, right? Or don't look. Or, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're only human. We all got eyes. Ashley says, we look together. Okay. Um, Dina says, yes, I look. I'm here for Candace and Ashley as well. I'm 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 just glad that uh you know finally whoo we can move on from that. Meanwhile, we have Robin allegedly having some concerns about her own relationship. Um, you can see her here. Sharice will be seen a lot throughout the season, from what I understand. So that's that's it, right? Um. It says Robin has her own concerns about extramarital affairs ahead of her second time around nuptials to former husband Juan Dixon. She says, I want to talk to Juan about getting a prenup, she says, before asking a legal consultant, are there clauses about infidelity? I mean, I guess that's a standard question when you are dealing with a prenup. Um... How do you guys feel like, feel about prenups? Do you guys feel like, do you have a prenup in your marriage? I mean, is that a, is, am I asking too much? 
Y'all can tell me if I'm asking too much of y'all business. Do y'all believe? Maybe I'll ask this. Do you believe in having a prenup? I, I'm just curious. I think it's definitely for like the, the richer you are. I think it probably makes things easier, but I don't know. I, I'm kind of on the fence about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. But Juan apparently is not too happy about it because he's like, He's confused and he's like, well, why are you mentioning this now? OK. So then Ashley and Giselle allegedly have questions about Candace's husband, Chris. This is where things get juicy. OK. Um. Oh, here's a moment where they ask Giselle about whether or not she's sleeping with Peter Thomas. OK. Uh, so there's that. And uh, Peter is in the in the trailer as well. Because we do know that they was down to the bar one when they was in the Miami, all right? So here's the thing that's going on with the whole Candace situation. Let me see if I can. Yeah, here it is. I am trying to figure out what this is right here. It's a photo of Ashley and someone. And it appears as though... The someone that she is talking to, maybe Chris Bassett? I don't know. I don't know who it is. But they flashed it on the screen when they were talking about this. So Ashley tells Robin, at 2.40 in the morning, I get this DM from Chris. So I guess this is allegedly the DM that she got from Chris. Okay allegedly i don't know if this is it i don't know if this is it or not but this is what flashed on the screen right and so she points to a message in her phone that he sent her on instagram okay so this is they're saying it in the article should have come to the w and this is what he is saying to her okay and um I guess that's the hotel restaurant that he manages. That's what it says in the press release. And then Ashley is like, well, who were you with at the W? Because you were not with your wife. Okay. So then we see, oh, we got a super chat here. Um, Cindy says, I know Robin is not asking for a prenup after losing all of that man's money. No, ma'am. He deserves half of what she got. Well, I do recall her telling us that story. And thank you, Cindy, for that super chat about how she did, uh, you know, her regrets with their past financial investments, um, and how those things played a part in their marriage and, and how things went. Okay. All right. So then, Apparently, we will see um, we will see Candace asking Chris about going out so much in this little scene right here, okay? And then you see Karen and Giselle, I mean, uh, Giselle and Robin. You'll see them talking about um, the whole Chris situation. And Giselle says, many a married man have tried me and I felt like he was trying to see if I was with it. He's a sneaky link. So between the text, met the DMs that Ashley is talking about and then the um, Giselle telling robin that he was trying to see if i was with it he's a sneaky link that's gonna cause some problems and in the in the confrontation between candace and giselle candace asked her you want to say that my husband made you feel uncomfortable and giselle says 100 percent so then the press release reads that that accusation doesn't sit well with candace and she says Giselle is dead to me. That's what she tells Chris. And Chris is insisting in the trailer, I didn't do anything. Okay. So apparently, Ashley and her husband, Michael. Okay. Now, 
They separated in 2017. I don't know if anybody knew that. Then they reunited and had the two kids together. Then in April, she announced they were separating. So Candace talks about how Ashley's in an elevated place that excludes her crusty, booty-grabbing husband, Michael, okay? But then after talking about how revealing to the ladies that they're separated, she then tells everybody that they're buying a house together, okay? So it's confusing to me, okay? That's very confusing to me. Are you breaking up or are you staying together? So I guess we'll just have to watch and see how it plays out. And then Karen tells her, girl, that ain't no divorce. You don't buy a, a house with a man that you are divorcing, okay? So then Ashley talks to her, you know, her parental, uh, I think her parents, um, about, or her uncle and her family about it. And she says, I'm going to be responsible for the well-being of two kids. And saying that she, because she's trying to call Michael in this scene right here, and he's not picking up his phone. And her uncle tells her, if anybody doesn't want anything to do with this family, I can say he's a, I can't say he's a good man. So you will see that also Wendy ends up going to the hospital um, because she's working too much. So you have that going on. And then apparently we will also see a really big blow up between Karen and Sharice because, you know, Karen's mom passed. And so apparently Sharice brings up Karen's mom in the midst of this altercation. And you can see Karen screaming at Sharice going the heck off. OK. Um, so here's the moment. There it is. This is the moment that. <laughs> Mia tosses the martini at Wendy, okay? This is allegedly at the bar one. Don't you love how Karen is just is casually just sitting there leaning back like, girl, don't get none of this on me while you causing this scene right here, okay? Um, So we will see some a, a martini being tossed. Again, as I say, Mia's no longer tossing salads. She has graduated to the martinis, okay? She's graduated to the martinis, all right? Now, I can't for say, I can't for sure see if she hits the nail on the head if the drink actually lands, but I mean, you know, she's there, okay? Th throwing the throwing the glass, okay? Um, and so let me read to you guys what it actually says in the press release about each lady, okay? Um, let me go back. Give me one second, y'all. All right, so the press release reads this. Giselle Bryan is inching to becoming an empty nester, but it's bittersweet. Um, dang, why does that keep playing? Okay, but it's bittersweet. Her oldest, Grace, received her driver's license and is ready to hit the road, while twins, Adore and Angel, are turning 16 and will be leaving the West Wing soon. Giselle is also in the streets dating and rekindling a romance with someone from her past, but finds herself entangled in drama involving another housewife's husband. I'm assuming that's going to be Peter Thomas. It says, Karen is Huger is looking and feeling better than ever with some tweaks. Her choices have left Ray questioning the motives behind her refresh. He worries that vanity procedures could have a negative impact on their daughter, Raven. It says, Ashley Darby recently separated from Michael and her main focus is motherhood with a little TikTok on the side. She's looking for a new home for herself and her boys, but with Michael's help, which, which makes the women question if she wants to be free of him or not. Robin and Juan are finally engaged and everyone is expecting a wedding any day now. Hint, hint. Everyone but the Dixons, who have mastered the art of procrastination. While getting married is not a top priority for Robin, getting a prenup is, as she is now the primary breadwinner in the family. Ooh, now that's interesting. I thought that, do, 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 does the coaching world not pay? 
Or is it just that she and her housewife check and her embellished line is bringing in all the revenue and now she has become the breadwinner? I don't know. Oh, we had a super chat. My bad. Alfred says, Giselle coming for Candace. She don't want that rat tat 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 Candace, does she? Um, I don't think she does. All right. It says, Candace Diller Bassett is busier than ever with a successful music career, but if she wants babies in the future, she has to act now. She does, in the trailer, talk about that a little bit, and she has begun the journey with freezing her eggs, but along the way, there are a few hiccups. Chris has taken a new job that is taking up a lot of his time, and an allegation from some of the women makes waves in their marriage. It says, Dr. Wendy Acefo, it continues to teach, serve as a political analyst on national cable news and run her candle business. She now wants to open a Nigerian-themed lounge. Eddie thinks she has too much going on and needs to focus on her health and her family. Can she juggle it all and maintain her sanity? Now, here's what I will say. I, what I don't like is... Wendy could be like me, right? I sometimes think that I can do everything that I want to do. And it's just not possible. But I don't want her to end up being the housewife that starts a new business every season, right? I don't want her to be that housewife because I want, if, when you start dividing your time up in too many ways, you don't give the one, the 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 two or three things that you need to be great at, um, time to flourish and for you to master them all so it's kind of like master the one before you continue to you know build the others unless you have a team like a candy in which case it makes things a bit easier although i'm sure it's still challenging for candy but you do need a team in place if you want to scale all of these different business endeavors okay um so the candle business is still in effect, but now she wants to open up a Nigerian-themed lounge, which I'm not mad at. I just don't want her as a person or as a housewife to take on too many. You know what I'm saying? Because I, well, let me tell y'all something. At the end of my days when I'm doing videos, and it's sometimes three videos, and I, I'm doing videos on another channel, I, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm working on books. I'm, I'm, I, I'm out of it. I'm literally flipping a house that I have not seen yet, okay? So I I just I just don't want her to walk this same path cuz I know how it I know how it how it how it goes. You know what I'm saying? Um Oh, we got a super chat from Alabama born Ball who says We've been waiting on Robin and Juan to get married like we were waiting on Sheba Sheree. Is it going to take 14 years? Jeez. I mean, I hope not, Alabama born ball. I hope not. Thank you for that super chat. Yeah, absolutely. You can burn out real quick, okay? Um, and I'm learning that the hard way. Mia, okay, it says Mia implies on social media that she has cancer and then reveals that she needs further testing to determine if she has cancer. The back and forth has the ladies questioning what is true and what is not true. Then it says, former housewife Sharice Jackson Jordan returns as a friend and a voice of reason that most of the ladies welcome except for Karen, who mysteriously goes out of her way to avoid her. And then it says, Jacqueline Blake joins as a friend. She and Mia are so close that one might think they are sisters, but some unusual behavior has the ladies wondering what the real story is. So what is the real story? What's going on with this whole situation? Or what is this what is this trying to imply? It's so I got so many questions that I I'm so excited about this season. Um I can't wait to see how this all plays out. I mean, this the press release and the trailer has left me with more questions than answers, but that's a good thing. And it doesn't look 
at, in the trailer as if there is any one main villain. Like everybody looks like they're active. Okay. So anyway, um, Candy B says, why do y'all think someone has to get married on y'all time? It's weird. Candy B, that's a very valid point. I think the problem is, is that she keeps talking about it, right? And so because people don't necessarily believe in the relationship from a viewer perspective, people are like, okay, we'll bring on the wedding if this is what you want to do. Because I think if people believed in the romance, I don't really feel like we would question it as much. Um, and I don't know why we don't believe in it. Um, I think that Robin is a relatable character. I think that people do or should get married on their own time. And whatever works for them works for them. But then also, too, don't make that your story if it's if it's just never going to happen. Right. Talk about something else. You know what I mean? Because when we watch reality TV from the perspective of a viewer, it's almost like reading a book. And when I'm seeing a story arc play out, I, the viewer, am looking for the finale or the culmination or the, the apex, the climax of the story. So if season after season, we never reach that climax, it leaves the audience as, as viewers as readers, disappointed, okay? It's like a storyline that, that just is keep going like this, and you're like, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Put it like this. It's like having relations, okay? But never reaching the point of, oh, wouldn't that leave you unsatisfied? Does that make sense, Candy B? Did that make sense for y'all? It's like having it's like doing the doing the um the bang bang, but never getting the bang. Okay. That's how I feel. Um she talks about it. She's talking about it in the in the trailer. She's asking about a prenup. She's asking Sharice about a prenup. She's asking Juan about a prenup. She's seeing the legal expert about a prenup. She is bringing it up, okay? They are the ones who proposed on camera. If somehow, some kind of way, it ended up in People Magazine that they had obtained a marriage license. Like, who put that there? Like, did, I mean, did somebody did somebody watch them? Because somebody somebody at the office confirmed it, right, to people. So it must. I, my thing is, it's it's being talked about, and she's talking about it. So we, the audience, want to see the culminate. It's like this. It's like she Sheree talking about she by Sheree, and fourteen years later, on the day that she by Sheree, the, when she told us to have our credit cards ready, won't nothing on the site. But I'm going to get to that in another video, okay? Um, Miss D. Green says, if you listen to their Reasonably Shady podcast, you may change your view on Robin. I find her to be more relatable after hearing her perspective on various topics outside of the show. But see, Miss D. Green, that's why I said Robin is relatable. That is the magic of Robin. She is relatable. So I honestly could care less if she got married or not if I saw more of her just being relatable in her day-to-day -day momness, you know what I'm saying? And being her own person. And I'm because I always feel like she readily stands in Giselle's shadow. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want her to do that. That's my issue with Robin. Um, and right, that is outside of the show. I would now have to go to another platform to get the to get what I need from the actual show. But that could be the producers. So it, you know, it it's it's a toss-up, but that's just the problem with it, you know. Um we all see the potential in Robin. Okay. That's that's what it is. 
Yes, we want her to be relatable on the show. That's that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's like we are all rooting for her. Yes, it's like she started shrinking behind Giselle when she was not that way first season. No, um, Marsha, no one hates Robin. We're all complimenting her. We just want more. That, that's not a bad thing to ask for. It's not. So, y'all, listen. Y'all can't always take criticism or feedback as hate. It's not. It's not. I can guarantee you 99% of these people in the, you know, the community here, they do not hate nobody on this cast. But when we talk, when we're talking about the show, we're talking about what we see and what we're expecting. Like that's how that's where we're coming from. It's not it, like don't mistake criticism and feedback for hate. Ex exactly, y'all. Y'all are basically saying what we're I mean, you, look at, the, and the proof is in the chat. The proof is in the chat. People don't want her to fall out with Giselle. That's not what we're saying. See, uh, yet again, we are simply saying that G Robin seems to place herself behind Giselle in every situation such that it feels like she diminishes her own light to give more spotlight to Giselle versus being an independent character doing independent things on the show versus always just kind of being backup support for Giselle in messy situations. That's all we're saying. They ain't got to fall out. I don't want them. I mean, because they seem like they're real friends. But, you know, it, 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 we just we just want. Yes. I want her to I want her to shine the same way that Giselle shines because she has it in her. Period. Period. Boom. Put you put it that you hit the nail on the head. Serena V says we want Robin to be full time, not acting like a friend of. And sometimes she acts like a friend of the show and we want her to step into that full time you know what i'm saying exactly 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 uh miss d green says i wasn't directing the super chat towards you richie you do your due diligence um but we have we unfortunately have to watch these shows with a third eye you are absolutely now, now this uh, yes i agree with you on that too miss d green and I think that you provide a good perspective as well. And maybe that's the thing, too, that we need to look for with Robin. Maybe maybe it's production that doesn't give us the full picture of Robin. And so maybe if we're looking for more, maybe we need to go visit the Reasonably Shady podcast. And so you could be right. It could be a production thing. Um, so, I mean, there there is that aspect of it, too. You make a fair a fair point. All right. Um, listen, thank you guys so much for tuning in, tapping into this, you know, little, uh, this was really off the cuff. I, I knew that the trailer was coming out. I was going to do a regular video on it, but I kind of felt like I wanted to talk to y'all about it, you know, get some opinions, see what y'all thought, ask y'all some questions. Um, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate each super chat. I, I, I honestly do y'all. Somebody said that there was a spam in the chat. Um, I didn't see it. Oh, I see it right now. Thank you guys. They have been blocked. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and with that being said, y'all know what we we um y'all know how we do it. <laughs> we we gonna have to dance our way up on out of here. I love y'all and, and be sure I'm gonna listen. My next video is gonna be about Shiba Sheree. Trust.